Before you get mad at me, disclaimer, I understand this series is not a documentary, it's a romanticized historical fiction produced for entertainment. Thing is, my viewers, myself included, enjoy learning a thing or two about the weapons, armor, facts behind popular historically based productions. So here we are. Alright, have a seat. Welcome to the historical evaluation and review of Asterix and Obelix Slap Them All. Oh wait, no, it's Barbarians 2. Same combat. Barbarians Season 2 has arrived on Netflix. As the publicly declared Roman fanboy that I am, and I absolutely admit that, I was like, you know, Teutoburg and whatnot. <sighs> I liked the first season, there were a few details I wasn't a huge fan of, I made five videos about it, but you know, all in all, it was alright. <laughs> oh my gosh. But get this, the script for season 2 of Barbarians was so bad, that the freaking historical advisors of the show quit. <laughs> keep your cool, keep it together. <laughs> so let me get this straight. They made season 2 of a historically based series without historical advisors. <laughs> But here's the thing, I was really looking forward to season 2. In fact, I thought they were never gonna make it. Because I thought, you know, considering what happened historically, Warus' revenge and whatnot, the Romans going back there to make them pay, I was like, I would love a season 2, seeing Romans kicking astronomical amounts of ass, which is what happened historically. But I thought they're never gonna make it. Oh no, but they did make it. So I'm like, wow, that's gonna be so fun. But then this happened, and it's bad. Really bad. But if you're bored of my voice already and you're just gonna click away, let me tell you this. Asterix and Obelix has more realistic Romans. Many parts to this video. Pause the video now to have an idea of what's going on. Because I don't. Armor and weapons department, how are the props? Well, compared to previous productions set in ancient Rome, which were complete disasters, Barbarians has reenactment level gear for the Romans. And I've actually praised them already in my previous video, so is it good? Well, it's comparatively good. Means that on one hand, and it's gonna look much better than your usual movie prop rubbish made of plastic, high density polyethylene, ABS, whatever you. It's a step forward for authenticity, so big thumbs up for that. Now, given you also have Roman soldiers with a I eat at McDonald's every day gut, whom also seem to be wearing galvanized mail, not exactly the best way to go for authenticity, but hey. For those who don't know, it's just that pale grey colour, which is the result of the zinc plating that makes you look like a lamppost. The real problem is with the Germanic outfits. I have no idea what on Mount Olympus has happened here. The Germanic tribes look horrible. And that's weird because in season one they looked alright. Sure, the costume designers did get a little carried away, making the Germanic warriors look like the Lord of the Rings Urukai. But then again, Tacitus, in his work Germania, does say that the Hari, specifically Western Germanic warriors, carried black shields and used body paints. So, perhaps not the best representation possible, but still historically plausible. But now, we've got <coughs> thin squares of black leather bolted onto, I don't know, more leather? Leather jerkins, biker gear. And look, it's even bent just from storage. The good luck using that in a battle to stop a Roman gladius. But they don't need to, because the Romans on this show are absolute morons. At the very beginning of the series, we are told that we are in 10 AD, which means we are one year after the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. We are told that Tiberius and Germanicus are beginning their operations in Germania, but their reinforcements are constantly ambushed and butchered and destroyed by Germanic barbarians. That is absolutely False. If you watch me play Asterix and Obelix slap them all, you will have had the exact same experience as watching Season 2 Barbarians combat scenes. It looks the exact same, I'm not even joking. Maybe they went through the options and selected Rookie Mode. All the Barbarians do is pierce through Roman armor like it was butter. Through and through. The flipping blaze comes out of the other side. Oh, and the Romans on this show are allergic to shields. They just throw them away in combat. It's absolutely moronic. Look at this one. I'm gonna print it. This frame is a cut through muscle cuirass. Armor is absolutely pointless. So there is this scene, and I'm literally, this. I'm gonna put the reference here because you've got to watch it. Because I lost IQ points. The Romans are evil and they decide to ambush the barbarian tribes as they are having their own meeting. This happens in the middle of the night, the Romans surround the camp and they start shooting at the barbarians and start killing them. But lucky for them, they have got Falquin, max level D&D barbarian in rage, whom, I'm not exaggerating, manages to kill something like 15 Roman legionaries in full battle gear 
gear, half naked and unarmed for half of the fight, flips them and kills them so easily that the... The entire Roman battalion, the whole detachment, including mounted officers, retreat. One versus 50. They run away from him. Today is gonna be a little something more. If you enjoy Asterix Veilon, you're gonna love this show. I mean, be my guest which pairs beautifully with what they tend to repeat over and over throughout the entire show. One barbarian is worth three Roman. Romans are so weak. Pair that with Arminius's kid who, for some reasons, <laughs> decided to double down in Korean Taekwondo. Yeah. And don't you even get me started on this Carthaginian girl here, who's dating the D&D barbarian. So she hates the Romans because the Romans were so horrible and during the sack of Carthage, Roman legionaries killed her family. Oh my gosh, the Romans did that? Yeah! Oh, that's horrible! Really? The sack of Carthage? That's what you're going with. Which happened in 146 BC. Which means she's at least 150 years old. And Germanicus too, I mean, wow. You look stunning, mate. Considering we are told that he is the guy who murdered them. Oh my gosh. Time travel. You know how it is. It's a movie. It doesn't matter. The armor is there just for fun. And the Romans are the villains. Barbarians are the heroes. Deal with it is what you could tell me. Absolutely. But here's the thing. Is the rest of the things that happen at least close to what happened historically? <laughs> Get ready. It's my lucky day. You know, this guy, Flavius, Arminius' brother, he's one of the officers of the Roman Legion as they are invading again. Spoiler alert if you really want to watch the series. He is gay. Good for him. Uh, he actually wasn't. Say what? This character is rather important because, first of all, he has a gay relationship with Marbod, who is the leader of the Marcomanni people, which is not true. They were not in a gay relationship. They were not gay, as far as we know. Oh, but come on, Metatron, maybe, as they say in the show, when they met in Rome during their upbringing, they could have fell in love. No, they couldn't have, because they never met in Rome. The age gap between the two is so massive that when one was being brought up in Rome, the other one wasn't even there. Historical fact. This whole gay relationship is false. And I don't have a problem with a gay relationship represented on this show because it's set in the classical period. If this was the medieval period and you had an open gay relationship, they would have been burnt at the stake. But this is pre-Christianity. So no problem with a gay relationship in the show. It's something that happened historically. And the Romans had a relatively open mindset towards homosexuality, as we are told by Sextus Empiricus. The problem is not the gay relationship per se, is the fact that they shouldn't have chosen Flavius. During the Germanic attack of the Roman encampment, which by the way never happened, he dies at the hand of a Roman and that creates this dramatic scene when he dies in the arms of his lover. Well, that didn't happen either. Flavius not only didn't die there, but he will go ahead to become a pain in the neck for the Germanic people because he will never betray the Romans and he will make the difference on the field of battle against them. All of this is not going to happen since they already had him die just because they wanted this scene to be, oh my gosh, they love each other so much and now he's going to die. Oh. But it's not even that. <laughs> Check this out. Historically, he will go back home, he will have a son, Italicus, and Italicus will become eventually the leader of the Cerusci under Roman power since Arminius ends up being murdered by his own family. Family. What's gonna happen now? By sacrificing this character for the sake of the specific gay relationship, they have altered history to the point of having created a completely separate parallel universe. But what about Tiberius's horrible thing? He kidnapped Arminius's wife, Thusnelda, and look how evil he's holding a knife at their baby's throat. Well, I think we can excuse him, since that baby wasn't even born yet. Historically, the Romans kidnapped Tusnelda when she was pregnant and her child will eventually be born in Rome in benign captivity. The only reason why they went for that is because Tusnelda literally is unstoppable. She flips the Romans like it's nothing. The only way they can beat this very strong, powerful woman is by doing something as horrible as pointing a dagger at a baby's throat. Oh, but what about Segestus, her father? The Romans use him to kidnap her and then they behead him right there. No, they didn't. Historically, Tiberius does not have Segestus beheaded. They made that one up completely. It is reported that Segestus, in fact, went back to Rome and even saw his daughter being captured and brought to Rome. 
with his own eyes. But you know how it is, romance, evil, barbarians, freedom. In fact, let me tell you about this whole obsession about the barbarians are fighting for freedom, that the Romans are horrible because they're coming to our territories to enslave us, that's so wrong. But it's interesting because they keep talking about the Mark of Money, right? They keep talking about how powerful King Marbod was and they tell us that his clan is in the east, right? But they don't tell you that Marbod wasn't originally from the eastern side, in fact, modern day Bohemia. He went there, subjugated and enslaved the local populations by force, took their land and established his own kingdom there. Hold on a minute, that actually sounds worse than what the Romans did, but hey, freedom. And talking about Marbot, initially he's all about, yes, I'm with Rome, I don't want to ally with Arminius, but eventually changes his mind and allies with Arminius against the Romans. That never happened. Historically, Arminius and Marbot went to war. They also tell us that they spend their youth together in Rome. Again, that never happened. Age gap. Finally, the last problem I've got with this TV series is the fact that the series creators have publicly said that the reason why they changed pretty much everything about Arminius's historical facts is because, get this, they were trying to correct in the public image Arminius's story and character because in the 1940s, a very famous German extreme right political party, don't make me say the name otherwise they'll demonetize this video, changed everything about the historical character Arminius for their own political propaganda. Now, <laughs> hold on a minute. So you're telling me that you're pissed because Arminius's character and story were changed by a political party and that's the reason why you decided to change everything again? Which is the exact same fucking thing? The logic. The uh, writers of this show. Do you want to know what the best way is to correct a misdeed such as the changing of a historical character's real story? Tell the truth.